Good morning, team, and welcome back to day four of five. I'm David from CrossFit Sirencester, aka Coach Disco. And I'm Anna. And thank you again for joining us. Like David said, we are on day four already. That's gone really, really quickly, hasn't it? Yeah. So today's emphasis is all about balance and coordination. So you are going to learn a new skill today, which will transfer hopefully over to your handstand. Hope that's the plan. So the session going to goes as follows. We're going to go through our the warm ups. So that's some yes. jumping jacks, a bit of jumping around, some slightly more dynamic or ballistic exercises. Then we've got a bit more specific warming up using our Stephen the social distancing room and things again. We go through our skills. Skill today, we're going to focus on something called a Turkish get-up. There's lots of variation on this Turkish get-up. We've got a pretty basic one today to make sure you guys are nice and safe and you can just get comfortably in your own home. You guys can use a kettlebell, dumbbells, bottles of water, yeah. whatever you have available, really. Small child if you want to. And then we'll go through our Metcon. Metcon's day is going to be an M on, and every minute on the minute, it is 12 minutes in duration. We get to try out that new exercise, that Turkish get-up. We add in some new stuff a windmill press, which is quite a challenge for your mobility before we finish up some single arm swings. So it's a kettlebell workout to finish up today. Brilliant. Our words positive today, every day is a second chance. <laughs> Athletes, ready to warm up? Yeah, let's get warm. So we're going to start with some jumping jacks. Going to give out a bit of space. So 20 jumping jacks to begin with. Very floppy hair today. <laughs> You keep in count? Yeah. Excellent. 17, 19, 20. So we're going to change that movement now to go front to back. Exactly the same thing, but work through a different range of motion. Lose Eight, eye. 9, and 10. OK, so from there, we're going to take a step forward. I'm stepping forward to my right leg. And I'm going to go my left elbow down to the ground. Little tap. And then I rotate. We're going to do five repetitions. So this is mobilizing your hips, ankles. Switch. A switch sides, exactly the same thing again. Other side, elbow down. Still using those uh, rules for the squats from last week. Knee outside. Little toe. That's five. Very good. From there, we're going to go put a bit of work on the shoulders. We're going to start with our Shakira. So work through a full range of motion in your shoulder. Because they're probably feeling quite tight after the yeah, last especially the last days. two days. Mr. Miyagi time. Wax on. Little circles. We're going to go backwards to begin with. Larger and larger and larger circles. So you can brush past your ears. Your 10 reps. And we're going forward from the 10. We're going smaller and smaller and smaller. And we're going to lateral taps. We're going to go across your body, opposite shoulder, and reach. we go hands up and back, down and back, be as tall as we can, a bit like practicing our handstands the rest of the session of the week. Pushing that floor away or lifting the ceiling up as our cue. And give yourself a hug. So next we're going to go into a position called a speed skater. So we're taking quite a wide base. I'm make sure I'm gonna whack Anna with my <laughs> monkey arms. So a wide base, and I'm going to do a speed skating position. 20 reps. Let's go for 20. So you can gradually build the speed up over the 20 reps. OK. I'm going to leave Anna some space for the Cossacks. <laughs> you can do that. So it's a Cossack squat. So she's transferring the weight from one side to the other. Again, make sure that heel stays on the floor, chest stays upright. And again, as always, knee tracker and a little toe. And remember to work to your own range of movement. Don't force these down. Yeah, Anna's got quite a good mobility <laughs> on this one, so she can work through a long range of motion. OK. Excellent. And we'll finish up with the hands walking on the floor. So some of you are probably quite tired from push-ups already, so we'll 
keep the push up out. Do, yeah. If you want to do a push up, you can add a push up. Otherwise, we'll stick just a straightforward walk out on your hands. So we've had classes on water, so we're pretty warm already. This might be the first time you've uh, moved today. I'm doing five reps. It's a good chance to work on coordinating everything, isn't it? And also keeping everything nice and controlled. See, I'm doing quite a slow tempo to make sure I'm engaging my abdominal muscles. I'm not dropping them down to the floor. I'm holding them. Up, yeah. So now you can grab your oh, yeah. PVC pipe, broomstick, mop, garden cane. So we've already done these this week. Yeah. So we're going to start with some shoulder passes. We'll take that PVC pipe overhead. Now again, if you don't have a broom or mop to hand, you can just use your sweater, roll it up nice and tight. It does the same job. A hand towel works quite well. So yeah. When we do our session with the Science as a Swim Club, we quite often use a hand towel. It's about the right kind of length for those guys. Ten repetitions. Then we do an exercise, we're going to revisit the shoot through. So a shoot through is a bit like that high mountain climber. Hands go to the floor, take a step up, lift up that same side hand, shoot through. And come back. Same thing, other side, shoot through. So I'm just letting David do this one because there's not enough space. <laughs> okay, so that, that was eight reps. Eight reps. Dive bomb. The dive bomb so push-ups. you show the full version, I'll show you the half version. So I do it side on for the full thing. Hands on the floor, front support, lift my bottom up like a downward dog. Reset. I'm going to do exactly the same on my knees. Six reps. Very good. I'm going to finish up with our scorpions. Okay. So lie on my front. I'll let David do this one. There's a lot of room. All the mats. I reach my foot across my body, the opposite side. So he's targeting his foot to the opposite hand. So that's where you're trying to go to. Don't worry if you don't get there as long as we're getting this rotation in the spine. So you probably only want to do four of those. Yeah, four, so that's four per size, eight in total. And we're back to the beginning again. Shoulder passes, 10 reps. So it'll flow a little bit more this time. So we're not teaching the exercise as we go through. Hopefully you can see the pattern. It goes 10, 8, 6, 4. Can we do the shoot throughs this time? Shoot throughs right up. So step up, shoot through. Step up, shoot through. That feels like quite a logical movement now. This is quite a helpful drill ahead of those Turkish get-ups later on. Seven. So I'll let you do the So dive bomb push ups for me. So remember you could do this on your knees. Just trying to create that nice shape. So down dog position and you're diving in. And then your scorpions to finish off. I'll do this on the floor. Yep, sure. So rotating. Across the body. So this will make your back feel nice and loose. Brilliant. So you definitely should feel nice and warm and definitely mobilised after this warm up. So all ready for the skill work. Yeah. So we're going to do the skill stuff. We're going to go to the Turkish get up. Yes. We're going to do it step by step. So it's pretty much like a dot to dot for you guys today. We're going to utilise the kettlebell. But you can just use a water bottle or a can if you don't have one to hand. And then turkey is a great exercise. Um, we use it a lot for developing 
that, that ability to get off the floor, particularly with some of our older members. Yeah. It's a really good drill just for getting people off the ground. Absolutely. If you're someone who struggles to get off the floor, this is a technique you can use. So it's a very together. functional movement. Very functional. What we call yeah. a functional movement is something that you can incorporate in day-to-day -day life. So we're going to start with, Anna's going to do the exercise. If you guys hold horse a second, you can do one rep and then we'll do it together as a team. So, hand goes overhead, just going opposite knee to the floor. And then opposite hand to the floor. We shoot through. Like we just right, did. There you go. So now she's sat on a butt, hand, elbow, down to the floor. Going to use this leg to help kick her back up. Kick down hard. Back up, shoot back through. One knee, so it's like a lunge, standing up, upright. Okay. So we do it together as a group. Should I change arms? Or should you change arms, whatever you want, yep. So, hands overhead. Weight or without weight, your choice is opposite knee to the floor. Once there, we're going to reach out to the side, touch the floor. So now I've got a foot, hand, and a knee on the ground. Shoot that back foot through in front. So now you're resting on your buttock as well. Then we come from there, rest on the elbow, down the elbow, down on the shoulder. And you should be led flat on your back with the kettlebell straight up in the air. Let's use that opposite leg, so the leg that's currently straight, kick down hard, up on the elbow, up on the hands. Push hard to the floor with the hand and foot. Keep looking towards that kettlebell as you reach up towards the ceiling. So let's try again. So on your own time this time, we won't go through as a cues. Can we do this one? Yeah, sure. So I'll go through a set for you guys at the same time. Um, remember guys, whatever you're using, it's the same principle. As long as you're keeping the arm nice and straight and locked out. Now, the key to this movement is if you keep looking at the object, it does tend to be a little bit easier to control that balance. This is quite light for David, so he's not having to use that technique where he has to look at it. But as it gets heavier, he would definitely need to look at that object to keep it balanced. This is one of my party tricks. I can do this with a small human. <laughs> no, we're not, we're not <laughs> going to do that today. Maybe not today. Not today. Right, athletes, the Turkish get up. So again, let's try on the other side. So we're going to definitely have a dominant side and a weaker side. Let's switch arms. If you're using a really light kettlebell like me and it's too easy, remember yesterday we talked about the bottom-up stuff, we can do some bottom-up ones. So I'm going to do a set of bottom-up ones on the opposite side. So all this is doing is making it harder for David to balance the weight. So he's having to use a little bit more control. And again, if you're finding it hard to manage keeping your hand upright, can always come down and bring it down a little bit to your shoulders in a front rack absolutely so if it is a confidence thing like David said you can just bring it down to your shoulder if just you're worried here. yeah athletes so I hope you've had a couple of yeah. reps per side now we're getting ready for the Metcon absolutely so like David explained before we are doing every minute on the minute for 12 minutes so we have done this before if you've been following us. So your first movement will be the Turkish get up. So you will have to perform four. Four reps. So again, that'll be quite a good challenge. So I'd probably say do two on your right, two on your left. Any time remaining in that minute will be your rest time. So if you do it in 30 seconds, you get yeah. 30 seconds worth of rest. And then your second exercise on minute two is a new one. So we need to teach that. It's called a windmill press. So do you want me to demo? Do you want to even demo? So, I'm going to take my kettlebell overhead and let Anna talk me through the workout as we go through. So, like we've just done, the aim is to keep this arm nice and locked. As you can see, what David is doing is keeping this leg nice and straight, and we're working through the back of the leg, the hamstring. He keeps looking at the weight, and he is stretching to get to the floor, as you can see. So, now, if you can look what happens to his legs, this leg stays nice and straight, but you will bend the opposite leg to help you get closer to the floor. So this really is going to challenge your mobility. Some of you might find this quite challenging, so just reach to where it feels comfortable for you. But if you keep looking at the weight, it makes it so much easier. So this is a quite an old-fashioned exercise. This is what the uh, old-fashioned circus strongman used to use. I think if there's a video of someone doing, or the guy picking up a pony with a windmill press, which is pretty impressive. Basically, you want to push the hip out as much as you can to get to the floor. So we're really utilising the hips today. Yeah, it's a really good exercise. Again, it, it definitely it will certainly illustrate lack of mobility in certain people. So we want you to do eight each side in that minute. So that's four for the turkey get-ups, and then eight 
for the uh, windmill, windmill presses. Press. So hopefully you can see the pattern, four of them, eight. And then we have one more movement to show you. The single arm swing. Well, now we have used a swing before, but this time we're using single arm. So David's going to perform 16 on the left and then 16 on the right. Again, we're really focusing on this hip complex. So really using the hips to drive the weight, not the lower back. You'll definitely feel the difference if you're doing this exercise wrong. The lower back should not hurt. Brilliant. And then transition is pretty straightforward. Hands go over the top, and just change hands. You can change hands at the bottom, or you can change mid-swing. Again, you can use a water bottle, a can, anything that you have to hand that has a little bit of loading. And the swing heights, I'm working about eye level. If you want to work a shallow height, that sort of chin height, that's equally as good. The key thing is making sure that chest stays up. So it's this motion rather than looking at the floor. The floor is bad. Right, guys, I think we're ready to go. So it will be 12 minutes on the clock, and then each minute on the minute, we will move through the movements. So we'll be doing it with you, so don't worry if you get lost. Right, are we ready? Do you want me to start with the Turkish get up? Let's start the get up, yep. So athletes, every minute on the minute, counting down, 10 seconds. So you stand by, guys. Hands overhead, I'll walk you through the first round, make sure you're happy with this one. If it's your left hand overhead, it's right knee to the floor. So we reach out, shoot through. Back through, stand up. Again, if you're struggling to hit all the reps in the time, this is obviously round one, um, we can obviously reduce it to two to get ups so rather than switch four. Switch arms. So, last rep for Anna. And the head button ready for the uh, <laughs> my attempts. So Anna's got 20 seconds worth of rest, so you guys would have, again, equivalent amount of time, probably. So that time will come in handy after you've finished the full rounds, because after they swings, you will be a little bit out of breath. Yeah, it's definitely going to be out of breath after the swings. So, second movement, windmill press. Eight each side. So we're using a four kilo kettlebell, so it's not crazy heavy, this is quite a lightweight for us, really. Go for it. So watch this hip, see how it's moving out to the side to allow David to get to the floor. Now, when we switch over, you'll see the difference between mine and David's technique. Just because I'm a little bit more flexible, you'll see this hip move a lot more. So remember on this one, we're doing eight each side, not eight in total. And you definitely will feel a difference left to right. That's quite normal. Again, that's why we're training both the left and the right side. Doing really well. Well done, so you've got about 15 seconds rest. So our next movement is the single arm swing. So we're doing 16 each arm. So this is where we're going to feel the heart rate coming up a little bit. Yeah, there won't be much rest time after this one. 16 is okay. going to take Get up ready. Of a minute. Here we go, athletes. So chest stay up throughout. Keeping those eyes on the horizon. Use those legs to lift. So Anna's using a different technique. So she's actually pulling the kettlebell down as well as driving those legs up. So this is a slightly more advanced technique. This is the kind of stuff we utilise in competitions so we can get that kettlebell moving a little bit faster. You can definitely hear that Anna's heart rate and breathing rate starting to rise now. Yeah. So the legs. You're going to put that blood and oxygen. Driving the floor away. 15. Whew. So Anna gets 15 seconds worth of rest. So be careful. Sometimes your object will get slippy and it might fly out. So make sure you're not facing your TV yeah. or something like that. We have had accidents in the gym. So back to the Turkish get ups. Four in total. Two on the left, two on the right. So the stimulus of this movement is control. You want to stay as stable as you can. So don't worry too much about moving fast. Well done, two more for David. And if you're struggling with the balance, 
Just keep your eyes focused on the object you are lifting. Well done. That's four for David. 22 seconds left. So I'll go into the windmill press. It's a pin off round already. Oh, that's right. So windmill press is team in three, two, one. So the eyes looking towards that kettlebell. So you can probably start to notice the difference in technique. Just because I'm a little bit more flexible, I can keep my legs quite straight and travel a little bit further. But again, like we've always said, you have to work to your own range, don't you? That's true. So this is eight per side, six in total. Smooth transitions, efforts coming from areas around your rib cage, lower back, stabilizing that shoulder. That's eight, I've lost count. <laughs> One more just in case. Yeah, that's eight. Swings coming up, guys. Five, two, let's go. Now again, the speed will be determined by what object you're actually lifting. Again, this is quite light for David, so he will get through this quite quickly. But don't worry if you're not, that's absolutely fine. Obviously, the quicker you do it, the more rest you get. So we've got 12 rounds in total. This is only round six, so we're halfway. Once this is done, Twenty seconds left. Oh, let me close. Easy. <laughs> Good. Okay, so we're back. Remember, next beep. Turkish getter. So kettlebells are quite a versatile piece of equipment. So again, if you've got those at home, you're quite fortunate. There's a lot you can do with a kettlebell. That's the reason why they're so useful in gyms. A couple of professional crosser athletes pretty much train mostly on kettlebells. There's a guy called Bronislaw Alinkovic, who's a big kettlebell user, who humbled me at a competition once. That didn't humble me, actually humiliated me at a competition once. Warming up my snatch next to him. I'm Getting close to my 95% of my warm up. This 95%, well, my 95% wasn't even his warm up weight. <laughs> Very embarrassing. Right. So, windmill press is next. Eight each side. Get ready, guys. Five seconds, athletes. Five seconds. And let's go. That's it. So you should really start to feel the stretch and focus in the back of the legs and these hamstrings. You feel that, David? Yep. Good. <laughs> I could lift a lot of weight. <laughs> so remember, we're doing eight each side. So all David's done is turn it upside down to challenge again the balance and coordination. And not to break my watch. Oh yeah, true. That is the thing about kettlebells, they do, do hit you if you've got watches. Well done, 15 seconds, we move into our swings. So when we start doing Olympic lifting stuff, we talk about pushing ourselves down under the bar. It's a similar kind of thing with these windmill presses. I'm actually pushing myself down away from the weight, I'm not pressing the weight up. Which is why we can lift quite heavy weights in these movements. said yesterday, if you guys are using those heavier kettlebells in that bottom-up press, it comes obviously quite challenging for the grip, particularly getting to the 20s and 24s and 28s and 32s. It's a pretty strong 
kept going there and I forgot I was supposed to stop at 16. <laughs> Twenty seconds on the clock. Twelve. Thirteen. Fifteen. Sixteen. Well done. Very good. Last round, guys. So, last time on your Turkish get-ups. Three, two, let's go. Now, hopefully... Now we're in round four. You're finding this a little bit easier. You might not be thinking about the movements too much now. Starting to create a good pattern. Well done, two more. It definitely will challenge your coordination. <laughs> yeah. Last one. Wimble press is next. Fifteen seconds, athletes. Stand by. So, Wimble press is not an exercise you want to perform quickly. This is a slow, controlled movement. That's obviously we're demonstrating. You know, with those heavier weights, you definitely feel all the muscles, the intercostals muscles between your ribs, the obliques, straight anterior sort of up here underneath the armpit, lats that stabilise all the muscles around the shoulder blades. So it's a good prehab exercise. And they might struggle with uh, some shoulder injuries in the past. And you're not actually pressing the weight by pressing through your arm. It's your trunk in the lifting. Go. Brilliant. Swing to finish up. Last one then, guys. So I do this, I might just change my feet around a little bit this time so you get to do a different type of swing. So I'm going to take one foot forward. So it's like a sort of a semi lunge position. We'll just change them just slightly on the uh, swings. A bit more variety. Right, get ready. Last time then, guys. Let's go. 16 each arm. Even though David has switched his position, he's still very much using his hips. Try not to pull the belt too much or the weight that you're lifting. Let the power from your hips lift it up. Yeah, it's most definitely a, a hip thing. There's no, you're not actually trying to pull your shoulder at all. Yes. I know it might be hard to not to, but just try and focus on really bringing the hips forward and squeezing your butt. Got 20 seconds left. You gonna do it? That's 12, yeah. I think <laughs> so. 13, 14, and there's 15. So well it's done. 16. You oh, 16. One more. <laughs> 16. Right, well done, guys. Last few seconds if you haven't quite finished. And time. Well done. You get a high five. Good job. You guys get high fives. Well Superstars. Done. We'll turn the clock off so it doesn't keep beeping at you. Yep. Yeah. We're in a little cool down. Right, I'll I'll let you. I'll give David some space for this next one. <laughs> so I'm going to go through this. I'm just going to work your hamstrings. They've worked quite hard today, and that lower back. So again, as I said, I need quite a bit of room for this next one. We're going to start in a straddle position. So from here, I'm going to roll back slowly. Work to a range that feels safe for you. I'm going to kick forwards hard, and then reach forward with my hands like a shoulder bridge but if you want to and you are quite mobile your feet can touch the floor it's behind me yeah I'm taking it away Just <laughs> but you don't have to like David said work to your own range so how many reps do you recommend David I think we got 10 reps Ooh, there is something behind my head dumbbells just be careful So I get hamstrings and lower back, hamstrings and lower back, both ends of the movement. Ten. 
Superb. And that's back in now. Stretch number two. Right, watch it. Laying hamstring stretch. Yep. So for those of you that might have found that a little bit too dynamic, absolutely fine. We can still stretch off the hamstrings in a static form. So we're just going to do a laying hamstring stretch. So if you need, you might need a towel or a resistance band to help aid you with this one. Or if not, you can just use your own arms to help put a little bit of pressure. So you've got a really great stretch. You can do this from the floor. Um, I quite like this one against the wall. So I'll stick both my legs up on the wall. My butt as close to the wall as I possibly can. Just enjoy that stretch there. I'm trying to push my knees against the wall. I'm bringing my toes down towards my head, which makes it more of a, a calf and hamstring. So remember we talked about those biaxial muscles. Just yesterday. switch legs, guys. So again, static stretches we're normally holding for in these sessions about 45 seconds. Normally we'd say a minute to 90 seconds worth of work. Sometimes two minutes on trying to develop that mobility. And just for your lower back, just because we have worked that a little bit from those swings, we're just going to do a gentle rock, pushing the knees into the chest. So you can see that's the first stretch we've managed with me doing that dynamic mobility, broken into two separate movements. So don't worry if you couldn't do it, guys. This is absolutely fine. <laughs> Feels quite nice. It's quite a comforting stretch. Brilliant. Well done, team. Another day in the bag. Absolutely. And we've just got one more to go. To day five of five. Yeah, absolutely. So remember, tomorrow we will have our retest. Exciting to see if we can maybe accumulate two minutes with not so many breaks. Yes, that's, that's quite a challenge. So again, we're not expecting you to have had a massive increase in one week. But again, you should have better control of your fingers. Yes. Hopefully looking for the, the quality of movement rather than necessarily holding for those massive amounts of time. Yeah, so today it was all about control and learning how to coordinate and balance your body um, with these different movements that we have shown you. But that is transferable over to the handstand. You do need a lot of strength, but you also need to be able to control that strength. That's why stability and coordination are so important to learn as well. And, and what we find is normally um, we have a lot of strong athletes, but they can't necessarily hold a handstand or begin to walk in a handstand because the stability isn't there quite yet. Yeah. yet. And it's nice to have a bit of a rest for not doing wrist tackle yeah. as well, so that's quite a good break. So well done, team. Yeah, well done. Have a good one. Virtual high fives for you guys. And we'll see you tomorrow. Thank you. Bye. Enjoy your day.